Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about our carbon and foam technology. We get a lot of calls, there seems to be a lot of confusion. <laughs> People want to use carbon for middle and high frequency absorption and they want to use foam for low end. It's just the opposite. So let's kind of walk through this uh, breakdown here of the carbon and foam and hopefully we can get some clarification and understanding. We have two proprietary technologies at Acoustic Fields. Carbon and foam, those are the ones I spent years and years developing. We manufacture our own carbon and we manufacture our own foam. And we do that because we want to control quality. We don't want to be like everybody else out there. That's not our objective. That's not our mission statement. We're about resolution. We're not about selling things. We're not about making things look that pretty. We're, we're all about music and voice and getting that room unfortunately, that we have to work in out of the way as best we can, and that's resolution. So carbon is for low frequency. Let's try to put our focus on that. Carbon is a low frequency absorption technology, but by itself, it's not. It has to be married with a, a technology to make it work, and we'll walk through that. Foam is a middle and high frequency absorption technology. It's lightweight, economical to manufacture, predictable and consistent. So you can go on our website and re read all about that. Carbon goes inside of a diaphragmatic absorber. So this goes back to my first comment about it's not a low frequency absorption technology by itself, but inside the, the carbon, inside our diaphragmatic absorbers, you can see that it is a fill material. So it increases the rate of absorption. So the diaphragmatic absorption determines how low the unit works at, and then the carbon inside of it gets the big horsepower out of it. That's why I always use the term horsepower for power. It's the most powerful of the three. The other two are Hemholtz and Membrane. Hemholtz is frequency specific, doesn't get much. You need a lot of them. Membrane works like diaphragmatic, but doesn't have the horsepower of diaphragmatic. So We've taken the uh, most powerful route with our technology and we've increased the horsepower of di diaphragmatic unbelievably. So that you just need to look at the data for that. Carbon filter inside manages the rate of, of absorption. And this is a great process because in our CAW system where we build it into the walls, I mean, if you look at a stud framed wall, it's basically a series of diaphragmatic absorbers, right? You've got studs that are the sides of the cabinet. And then you've got a back and you've got a front. So you put your carbon between them. So every 14 and a half inches in the room, you go after the low frequency issues. That's why when we build new rooms, we can guarantee frequency response. Because we're actually tuning that room every 14 and a half inches. On the four walls, the floor, and the ceiling. Nothing gets away, see, when you take that kind of finite and minute uh, micro approach to managing issues. And you have to if you're serious about resolution. So the carbon manages the rate, how fast, how much, and how fast it gets. And you can go on the website and look at those curves. A lot of people want to cheat, use over-the-counter carbons. No problem. It won't work. It'll work in the beginning. But the problem with over-counter uh, will work a little bit in the beginning. And that'll be an improvement, and you think you've done something. But in about six months, it'll quit because the, you haven't treated the carbon correctly for moisture retention. And carbon absorbs moisture, loses performance dramatically. Had a guy call, you know, who built a whole room and bought an over-the-counter carbon and installed it. He says it sounded great for the first four months. After that, it didn't work. What's the solution? He's got to tear it all out and start over. So, there's, you know, cheaters never win. There's a saying there. and You get what you pay for. So he got three, four months of performance and spent probably 80 grand. So costly mistake. Pericity count, size, and density. You can't use over-the-counter carbons because they. you have to have the process. The carbon itself, the actual structure of it is a good thing. But you got to change it, modify it to work with music and voice, to work with sound energy. It's designed to filter water and air. Well, sound is in water and air, but you got to modify it 
to deal with the pressure levels that we deal with, with low frequencies in small rooms and other issues that go with it. So it's, a, it's an expensive process. We actually close our facility down two months a year, 30 days uh, in the end of the year and 30 days in the middle and manufacture carbon. It takes that much effort. It takes a lot of men and a lot of facilities. And the machine we use to make it's over a half a million dollars. So you're not gonna teach your way to performance. You can't do it. People try all the time, but I don't understand that. It's such a waste of time and money. So we have our foam technology, which is wonderful from 125 to 500, and that's the most critical frequency range. It's the most critical frequency range for music and voice. I measured over 100 corporate boardrooms back in the 80s and 90s when I was developing my foam technology. And we found that that critical frequency range from 125 to 500, you had to get right. I mean, anybody can design a foam that absorbs above 500, but you got to get that 125 to 500 right. That's the critical reason. You can see here on our foam graph how smooth it is compared to the competition. So if you want linearity and you want performance, that's what you got to have for music and voice because your ear hears those bottom two dips in those products, not ours, okay? So if you want to increase the resident frequency, you can also increase the thickness of our foam technology. A two inch starts at 125 and goes down to one, it goes to 125, a four inch goes to, um, 100 and then 90 at the 6 and you can all get down to 80 and you can get that with 8 inches. So you got some flexibility is the is the issue here. You got some flexibility and you can change it around depending on what you're trying to do in your room. Foam is very lightweight, you know. I think our 6 inch foam ladder that's 6 feet high is like 70 pounds. So it doesn't weigh a lot. So you have a lot of flexibility here in what you, you're gonna do in your room. So a lot of people don't have budget for low frequency management, that's fine. Then you can increase the thickness of foam and get you know down into the lower frequency range below 100, but you can't get that 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 stuff. And that's really critical, especially in theaters and stuff like that. So I wanted to do this overview for people Seems to be after, I don't know, 14 or 15 years of doing this, there seems to still be a lot of confusion. I get calls where people want to use carbon, you know, improperly and, and the foam for, for low frequency, and it's not that. So it won't work for that. So hopefully this kind of clarifies a little bit about acoustic fields and our two proprietary technologies. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.